When you work with Azure Data Factory, and while you create a pipeline, you may use a parameter or a variable. Now in today's video, I want to talk about what these are, what their differences, and also some examples. Hi again, I am Rhys Ang. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. And I make videos about data engineering and Microsoft Azure. Let's start with parameter. Here I am in the Data Factory author page, and I have some pipelines that I already had. With parameter, you find that in here. So when you open a, one of the pipeline, you see these options to create a parameter. You can create a new one, and you can name what your parameter is, and you can fill in the type of that parameter. Now, what's the purpose of parameter? Now, parameter is created to make your pipeline or data set or link service reusable. So you can reuse it uh, multiple times and in later uh, usage. There are some limitations with parameter. So parameter can only be defined uh, at the start of the pipeline. And like a function in programming language, you basically create a parameter and you can pass value to that pipeline if you are creating a parameter in a pipeline. Let's start with some examples. I have here a pipeline called child pipeline, which is simply copying data from Azure SQL DB to Azure Data Lake. And I'm using two data sets. Uh, one is for the Azure SQL DB, and the other one is for the data lake. One of the main example to parameterize uh, your pipeline is to first actually parameterize your data set. So if you want to copy five tables from a SQL database, for example, you don't want to create five data sets. You can just create one and you can just parameterize the table name. You can just go to the data set and instead of setting the name of the table, you can create a schema. I will create two parameters here table. And what you can do is you go back to connection, you click edit, and you can replace the schema with parameter schema. And you can also add the table. Yep. Now from here, if I just go to my child pipeline, I can now go to source and specify here the dataset properties, the parameters, schema, DBO, and recipes. I can, yeah, make this basically now pipeline reusable more. So if I just save this, and if I run this, if I debug this, it will basically take that table. If I just change these recipes to another table name, then yeah, you effectively parameterize uh, your data set and your pipeline that way. Another example of uh, parameterizing your data factory pipeline is, yeah, uh, you can create another pipeline. Now I have this child pipeline here that we just talked about. And let's say I want to parameterize the SQL DB table name and I want to make sure I can reuse this copy activity. Let's say I just call create another par parameter now within this child pipeline. I just leave it blank. And I click that to the source. And I just parameterize. So add dynamic content again. I just click that pipeline parameter. This is the expression that uh, you have to write. And in order to be able to parameterize your pipeline. So once I've parameterized my pipeline here, I could basically go to my pattern pipeline. I have another pipeline here that I have prepared. And what it's doing is very straightforward, is just go to, you know, if you go to general and execute pipeline, this is a activity to run another pipeline. And got this, one set to invoke the child pipeline. So parent pipeline calling child pipeline. And now I have this parameter. So I can just type 
recipes or any other table that you want to copy. So what that means is you parameterize that child pipeline so that you, you can reuse that uh, multiple times for different purpose. The last example I want to give you about a parameter is that you can actually parameterize your link service as well. Here I have three link services and if you just go to one of these, let's say I pick the second one and I have my connection details here, you can actually parameterize this as well. And the reason why you, can, you want to do this is because you may have three or four different Azure SQL database and, and you just want to have one data factory and you don't want to have three or five different link services for different SQL databases. So what you could do is you can parameterize this. So similar way, you can just go to parameter here down the bottom. You can create, let's say I just name it domain and I just copy that one for now as a default value. And all I did is just replace that with that. Yeah. And when you click test connection, it will ask you what value you want to put in. And yeah, save connection. And the cool thing about parameterizing your link service now is when you go to your data set, you can now see in your data set, there's an option to change your domain here. Let's now talk about Firebolt. The purpose of Firebolt in Azure Data Factory is to make your pipeline more flexible and powerful. There are two types of variables. Uh, one is system variables that is provided by Data Factory itself. And these are things like pipeline name, trigger name, trigger, trigger time. And the other one, variable that I want to talk about more is actually your own variable that you create and, and use in Data Factory pipeline. Now, if you want to create a pipeline variable, uh, if you one of the pipeline here, you can just click down below, there's parameters and next to it, there is a variable. You can just create new like parameter. You can name it variable one and you can choose the type. Now, I'm just going to stick with string at the minute. And one thing that you need to bear in mind is variable, unlike parameter, can be defined at the beginning and also during the pipeline run. And this is what makes variable quite powerful. To give you some examples about variables, I'm just going to prepare two variables here. If you go down below in a pipeline, you see if variables here, and I have variable one and variable two. You can create a new variable by clicking plus here. I have one as a string. The other one is as a array. Array, uh, if you're not familiar to it, this is basically a list of items. Yeah. And to give you some a good example for this, let's say I want to change the way I call this execute pipeline. So currently it's calling uh, the child pipeline and I set a table uh, static value of recipes. Let's say I want to play with it on that. And what I can do is I can go to general here and I go to set variable. And I can now set the variable name, let's say ingredients, because I have a table named ingredients in SQL database. I can do is I can just hook that each other and instead of the static value I just change that to variable one it's a very basic example but you get uh, how this may work and maybe use uh, more flexibly later this is one example you can set variable so you set that variable first uh, at the start and you can change the value of it with this activity Another example that might be interesting is to use an array. Uh, may, maybe you want to collect a list of values that you've uh, acquired in the previous copy activity or in the previous pipeline, and you want to pass it on to Azure Databricks uh, or another copy activity within Data Factory. Uh, the world is your oyster. 
Now, to do this, uh, you can, let's say, just pick uh, this append variable here. And append variable only works with array. So if I just click that variable too, again, it's only available for array. So it's only doing that. Let's say I can just type AAA. And I have another one. Let's say I just named this variable two one. This variable two two. And I also add the same thing, but instead of one AAA, BBB. Yeah, so I have this two activities that append variables, variable two with two different values. And let's say if I just hook them up now. And let's say I'm just going to show you, I don't have a link service at the moment, but I'm just going to show you how it works. You can, for example, if you want to call Databricks and do cool stuff in there, and you want to pass something from data factory as a list of uh, items as an array you can just go in one of these notebook activity and then maybe you can pass that as a parameter here you can go to value let's say this is variable two again and you can add dynamic content and you can click that variable two and what happens here if you actually have a Databricks uh, workspace and a notebook ready, you can pass that variable into Databricks as an array. Okay, that is for today's video around Data Factory parameters versus variable. Uh, I hope you find my video useful. If you like it, please smash that like button and also subscribe for more videos about data engineering and Microsoft Azure. Till then, see you next time.